just stay still for a minute. Your lives are hectic. You're busy all the time. You're running after what's, what's ahead. How about we just take a minute right now? I think we can invest a minute in this presence. I believe in a minute in, the, in his presence. Oh, it's so much more worth than any, any amount of time elsewhere. And some people around you have had a tough week. Back's been hurting. Bad news has been coming around. So pray for the person just next to you. Pray a prayer of blessing on them. That God will do his work like, like only he can do. If you don't know what to say out loud, that is okay. For them, at least from the inside. God, I pray a prayer of blessing, a prayer, a prayer of healing on him, on her. That your presence might just change something in an instant, just like this. In the busyness of our lives, in the busyness of my life, Jesus. that goes beyond my own understanding. Pray the same thing for my person next to me, Jesus. Your ways are still better than ours. Before you sit down though, make sure you look at the person to your left and to your right, okay? Say, thank you for praying for me. Really appreciate it. And, and don't shy away from it. I'm like, I don't know them. They just prayed for you. It's okay, right? Thank you, worship team. Oh, guys, come on, no golf claps. Come on. Faith this morning. That's what we will be talking about. Thank you for that person. I'm with you. Faith is what we'll be talking about this morning. Um, you have faith that when you come to church, there's going to be coffee waiting for you, right? I don't care if I get some parking, but the coffee better be ready. So Brandy, where are you? Brandy, raise your hand. I don't know if you're in here. I hope you are. Brandy call, came in last second because Leslie was sick. And um, Brandy said, I'll go. I'll get it ready for the church. She came in. I'm, I'm telling you, nothing happens without somebody investing and sometimes sacrificing, right? So you got coffee? Brandy, thank you. Thank you. And we all need that drug once in a while. Come on. Some of you are like, no, I'm so much healthier than that. I drink orange juice. Well, God bless you. Bless your heart, like I was told before. I did not know what that meant until somebody explained it to me. So bless your heart. And she even touched my, 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 my elbows. Oh, gosh, she's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Welcome to the South, my brother. So here's what we'll do. I'll do something with you about faith that I do with college students and also high school students once in a while. We will do what I call speed learning. So you should go like this, try to raise one eyebrow, go like, what does that mean? We will go over a mouthful of content in five minutes. I'm not telling you I'm going to preach in five minutes. That will never happen. That will happen in heaven and not even there. But the first five minutes, we'll set up the story we'll be talking about. That moment where Jesus' way is way better than everybody else's way. Okay? So it's Matthew chapter 13 and 14. So you guys ready? Okay. Okay. 
You're like, I'm not a college student anymore. That was just a few years ago. Well, some of you was decades, but you're still ready for it. It was decades for me as well. So if you're not ready, well, as we say in French, put your hat on, tie it up with some, uh, some really good cord because it's going to be necessary. So Matthew writes to remind us that Jesus is the Messiah, right? That he has authority over everything. That he has given his followers the same authority. And he's there to set up the new rule of the kingdom. This is how we should be living from now on. And in now, in today's stories, he's going to be talking about how trustworthy he is in everything he does, in everything he says. And he starts with some stories in that moment. And the beauty of the stories, we know them as parables. It's not necessarily a word that we use very often these days, but it is. So Matthew 13 is a bunch of stories that Jesus says, man, there's so many people. I will teach them by telling them stories without totally explaining the meaning to them, but they'll get it. So there's a few of them. The first one is like, you know, the sower, you, you've heard this one. He goes and he throws some, some seed all over the place and there's four different ways. So when he talks about that story, he's talking about the importance of how we receive his word. Because it changes something. Are we worrying? Are we receiving it in good soil? Are we not receiving it? So he's talking about that parable. And then he goes about the mustard seed. This little seed, so small, so little, that when you plant it, it grows, and then the birds go and hide under it. He's talking about the kingdom of God is so wide and so safe that we need not to worry when we live and abide by the rules of the kingdom. Okay, that's pretty good. And then he goes on and he talks about yeast. And then he says, this little thing, you put it in the bread, and then the bread just blows up it just becomes so big and he says that the kingdom and the laws of the kingdom should permeate every single aspect of your life and not just a little, this part of my life or that part well Jesus doesn't have anything to do with this but he does with this Jesus help me with this. no but not with this please no no he says it must be in every single space of our lives And then he goes on, he talks about the treasure and the pearl and how much the kingdom has so much value in our lives and how much there is joy and willingness to sacrifice everything we have to go and live in that kingdom. And then he talks about the fishing net. He talks about this story about the guy fishing the net and then getting the fish and he gets a good fish and then he separates it from the bad fish whatever that may mean. But all of this is about remember how important it, it is to live and abide by the rules of the kingdom. Yes, I did say the rules of the kingdom. Because that changes something. We should submit to those rules, to those principles, to his will, and not live a life where we submit the God that we're serving to our will, to our rules, and to what we want. It's the other way around. That's the new rules of the kingdom. We submit to him and his authority, and that's what Jesus does. And it's funny because on the other side of our faith, the other side of our understanding and our submission, the kingdom takes hold of us. That is not dependent on the work of the Holy Spirit. It is dependent on, on us submitting to that new rule. Yeah, okay. I'll let that sit in for a few minutes. We're still in that speed learning. So let's, come, let's, come, let's keep on moving. After telling all these stories, Jesus goes back to Nazareth where he was raised. And there, well, it's very easy. People are amazed by his teaching amazed he knocked their socks off people are like mm. that's what happens they're like totally flabbergasted by the quality of his teaching the content of his teaching and whatever else and then some people go like oh. isn't that just the son of the carpenter? I saw him as a kid. I used to babysit you and I changed your diapers. Oh, whatever. 
I'm, I'm sure none of you have ever said that about somebody, but be free. But all of a sudden, this little story seems to remind us that the familiarity of Jesus brings contempt. They knew Jesus. They were amazed by his teaching just a few minutes ago. And all of a sudden, this Jesus is like, oh, well, hey, I know you. I've been there, done that, heard that before. So, okay, I'm sure none of you, I, I've been there. I'm just, yeah, Jesus, I've been following you for 47 years, 46 years now. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So familiar with him and his presence and what he does that I become content with him. I'm sure none of you get there, but I do once in a while, and I'm happy because I'm reminded that he is still the king. He still, he still has authority over my life, and that and sometimes I just need a little kick in the butt and a little slap behind the head to remind him of who he is. But these people knew who Jesus was, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. And then it says this in the scripture, and this is the funny part. So he did only a few miracles. I mean, we'd be happy for just a few, right? It's just, just a few. Because the prior chapters, it was all about, he healed the crowds. And everybody there, in this case, just a few. Because of their unbelief. The word here is used is very interesting because it, it, is, it talks about the absence of faith. It doesn't talk about doubting him. Because we all do at one point, right? But it's a, an absence of faith and trust. Don't, we don't trust who he is. We don't trust his authority. We don't trust in his care. We don't trust in his capability of doing whatever he needs to do. And this is what we call unbelief. Because we become familiar with him. Become familiar with his presence. I was in St. Lucia a few months ago. It was great working there. Short time. Enjoyed the rest of it. It was beautiful. They've got a place called the Pitons. Beautiful place. Only place in the world where you can see this. And we're driving there and you see them. It's like, wow, this is humongous. It's a, some sort of a edge of a volcano it's beautiful and the, but the people there look at it it's like it's just rock and trees but us tourists were like wow whoa click 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 oh my camera's not big enough to get the whole thing but they're like get on with it because when we get familiar to something we see all the time, we get familiar with it and it loses its sense of awe. When we, when we get familiar with Jesus, we lose that sense of awe. No blame, no judgment. It's human nature. I was in Montreal just a few weeks ago as well. And then, British Columbia on the other side of the country saw the mounds and I'm like, wow. I didn't remember how beautiful mountains are because I live in a flat country. It's called the low country. It's so flat. If we didn't have trees, you could look, you could watch a duck run for about three days. <laughs> hey, come on somebody. I mean, seriously, right? But no, we get familiar with what we have and we, we lose the essence of it. And they were like, oh, you've got the beach clothes. I'm like, yeah, but you haven't seen the beach at Tybee. I mean, it's a beach, but you know, it's not that great. But you've got a beach. I don't want to insult anybody here, right? I love the beach. I was, I was amazed by the mounds. I was amazed by the pitons because I wasn't familiar with the thing. Oh, here's what happens. His homecoming didn't really go well. And for reasons I don't know, my notes don't want to move. And here it is. On the other side of our reception of Jesus, our faith will be revealed. Or a lack of faith will be revealed as well. And then he goes on to feed a bunch of people, like 5,000 people. And the... <laughs> So funny, 
Jesus has compassion for the crowd. They're hungry. They're, they're in the middle of nowhere. They're in Vidalia. I don't know where they're at. They're just in the middle of nowhere. Just kidding. It's not, it's not nowhere Lions is. Everybody knows that. But, oh, okay, okay. No, stop offending people here. And then the disciples said, you know, they're thinking about the crowds as well. Well, Jesus, you should send them back so they could, you know, fend for themselves and get some food. And Jesus says, that isn't necessary. You feed them. There's just a bunch of people here. How are we supposed to, be, to do this? And then there's one of the disciples who robs a kid, basically. This week's food of five loaves of bread and two fish. He says, well, we got this. And then Jesus takes this and makes a humongous miracle with it. Well, on the other side of our faith, activated, Jesus will always multiply what we bring him. You can't multiply the five loaves of bread if we don't bring them. That's what it means. That's really what it means. But our faith must be activated. They needed to go find the thing that Jesus would say, okay, give me this. I can do something with this. Jesus will always multiply, always, always. And what we'll take a little more time on today is a story that's very similar to one that we've heard a few weeks ago when the disciples were in the boat and Jesus was sleeping in the back. The storm hits and then it's like, Jesus, don't you care about us? We're going to die. I was like, oh, come on, guys. Let me sleep. I've been working all day, ministering and praying for people. Okay. See, come on. It, it, very similar to that. A little different, though. A little different. Just, just a little bit. So in order to really understand what happens with our faith, how we submit to the new rule of kingdom and what Jesus really wants to do in our lives, I want us to stand, okay? We'll read together today. So let's stand together. Don't take your Bible to read because we'll have 59 different versions of the word and we don't really want to do that. So all the words will be on screen, but I want us to read together, okay? Well, it will be five of us reading this, great. So this is Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 36, okay? Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, the men of that place brought to him all those and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. Jesus, I pray that this morning, Holy Spirit, I pray that every single one of us will grasp that the faith that you have given us is the faith that we need in this very season, in this very moment. I pray that you find in us a crowd, a people, a, a, 
it, your sons and your daughters that will want to learn from what you have told us and have faith to trust you because your way is always better than ours. And all the people of God say, Amen. Amen. And you can sit down. That's awesome. I'm, I, I don't know about you. I've told you this. When I read scripture, I put intonations on it. I try to I wonder how they would say it. I don't know. I do this all the time. Sometimes I'm, I'm laughing when I read my scriptures because it's like, yeah, I wonder if they did it that way. I wonder if this has happened. I don't know. And I make fun of myself after because I'm like, I, you weren't there. You don't put, it's like text, right? You, you receive a text and then you, you read it. My wife is great at this. You know, she refurbishes furniture and um, and once in a while she said, well, I replied to this person. I say, oh, well, I'm, with, I'm glad I could really help you with this. I'm like, they don't know that's what you mean in the way you mean it. And they said, no, 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 I'm sure they understand that. Oh, okay, okay. And then she received a message back and she reads it to me. Oh, I am so happy that you can help us. We are so glad that we'll be able to do business. It's like, shut out. You don't know how they wrote it. Maybe they were driving. So we put intonations to things that we don't know. Because the way we receive things is also the way we'll interpret them. It's just how it is. If you're in a happy mood, you get a bad text. It's like, ah, you had a bad day. But if you're not in a good mood, you'll get a, you'll get a good text. And they're going to say, what's their problem? Right? So when we read scriptures, we, that's why I put intonations to it. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're not good. It's just for, to help me try to understand the meaning of the words that I'm reading. Okay? So read it the same way. And sometimes what I do is also take my Bible app and I let it read to me. And then you, different translations, different intonations. It's awesome. Just... Go for it. It's always good. So this is, this is the other side of our faith that's important. Because on the other side of our faith, there's something that happens. It's there. We have the faith. We have the trust in Jesus and who he is and why he asks us to do things this way and not that way. Why he wants us to trust him to that extent and not to this extent to go there and not there, to act this way and not that way. There's reasons for it. And the faith that we have in what he has told us determines a lot of the output that will happen, the results that we will get. And this is a great story. How many of you have ever heard the story of Peter walking on the water? So see, I'm, I'm talking to a mature church that knows this story. Okay, so hopefully we're still going to learn something from it. So what we know is that Jesus has proven many, many, many times the care that he has for his disciples, not only for his disciples, but for everybody. 13 chapters before, he's been proving that he takes care of them. In that boat, when they thought they were, they were going to die, Jesus says, okay, I'll calm the storm, and we'll, it's going to be okay, guys. Just a reminder for every single one of us that when we go through our storms and the things of our lives are like, this is way too rocky for me. Jesus, help me. <laughs> he comes in and calms everything down and you're like, it's going to be okay. He's proven this many times. They're hungry, he feeds them. They're sick, he heals them. Jesus, in this story, sends them on the other side. He doesn't go with them. Just as a reminder of where we're going today, right? Guys, go there. I'll meet you there. I'll take care of dismissing the people. That's why they freak out in the middle of the night when the waves are crashing. They've been there for about nine hours. These are sailors. Some of them were fishermen. They know how it works, right? But they've been going at it for nine hours. Oh my gosh, what is going on? And they're, they're just wondering 
I, how come we can't make this thing go forward? The Bible, that's what the Bible tells us. The waves are beating the thing, and also the wind was against them. So they're like panicking, and they're freaking out. They're wondering what's going on. Nine hours of working on something and seeing no results from it? Would you be happy to work for nine hours and see no results from it? Frustrating. Depending what you're doing, it could be a little scary. It could be all of that. They're using their talents, their capacities, their knowledge of the wind, the knowledge of the lake, the knowledge of the mountains and how the wind blows above. above. They're using all that they know. And it's not working. Okay, maybe somebody needs to remember, be remembered of this this morning. You can work nine hours, nine weeks, nine months, nine years, nine decades if you want to with your talents and your capacities, and it ain't going to change anything. It happens. I tried that one a few times. Get frustrated. Jesus, do something about this. And like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep you in the storm for a while, Stefan, because you're a little stubborn. You're a little hard-headed. Of course, I'm not. I think Jesus is taking his sweet time. I'm sure none of you go there, but I go there on a regular basis with Jesus. He's not my homie. He's my king. But I'll get in front of my king once in a while. Ugh. But this thing, Jesus is testing the faith of his disciples at this moment. Ugh. He is testing their faith. The first time, the storm, I'll calm it for you guys. This one, I ain't going to calm it for you. Because I send you right into it. The enemy's got nothing to do with this one. The devil wasn't hiding under a rock. He sent them right into it. Ugh. That's why they're freaking out. But the test of our faith will be sent back over and over and over and over and over until we learn the lesson. That's why Paul says, Forget about the milk of the scripture. You want some meat of the scripture. It's like, learn from what you're going through right now because this is a test of your faith. Oh, in this, in this case, it's about, do you focus on his character and trust him? Or do you focus on your circumstances and doubt him? This, this one's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I want to trust in the circumstances. Sorry, Adam. It's solid. This is what I see. The wind, I'm trying, not working. So I trust that and I start doubting him. How the kingdom is so safe for me and how it cares for me. I start doubting that. Ouch. And don't miss this one, because as Jesus walks on the water, he gets there. And obviously, we're like, they're so stupid, man. They should have known it's Jesus. Yeah? Oh, yeah? You go on the lake and see somebody walk on it, and you tell me it's not a ghost. I'd be, I'd be freaking out myself. I don't, I don't fear many things in my life except dogs and um, my angry wife, which never happens. Or when I make her angry, that's something else. But here's the thing. There's a guy walking in the water. There's no electricity. There's none of that. Forget our war. First off, somebody's walking on the water. They're freaking out, which is totally normal. But don't miss this part. He comes to the boat, right? And obviously, we all know this one, right? Oh, it's better to be in Jesus in the storm than to be alone in the boat. Yeah, that's not even my point this morning which is still true, by the way. <laughs> if they were in Jesus' presence and they totally missed what he was trying to do. We can be in his presence and totally miss what he's trying to do in our lives. 
it happens. This is where our faith needs to be activated a little bit. Because it changes something. When we, when we were about to leave Texas, and um, I wanted to keep doing what I had been doing for three decades, pastoring, leading people, and help things grow, and caring for people. I wanted to keep on doing that. So I applied to a few churches, talked with many churches. It's not working. It's really not working at all. I hear, I've heard more no's that I've never heard in my whole life. And then there's a moment where the Holy Spirit took a hold of my wife, Chantal, and she says, what if God is actually telling you that season is done and you need to move into something else? I'm like, no. No, I said, no. Yeah, teach my eye, man. I said, no. I ain't leaving that boat. I ain't leaving that boat. She was right. Yeah, they typically are. Husbands, just say, just nudge your wife right now if she's right beside you and tell her, I know you're right. I just can't admit it all the time. You can tell her that. Uh, but she is right. And so we had to change and understand what God was doing in, in our lives in the specific season of our life which changed everything. Because on the other side of our obedience, your faith will be empowered. Your faith has no power unless it's activated and you start and follow and obey. That's when something happens. Right after this, in our story, there's still this one where they freak out and Jesus and Peter says, Lord, if that's really you, who else could be walking on the water, by the way, Peter? I don't know how many people you've seen walk on the water so far. I know how many people you've seen heal the blind and they can see and feed thousands of people just like we did just a few hours ago. Who else could be walking on that water? Come on, Lord, if it's really you. Lord, if it's... Is that really you? Bid me to go in there. So we, to me, that's a little, that's, the, that's a weird translation in English to me. Bid me? So I was reading it. I was like, what do you mean bid me? I've never, I've never told anybody about bid me. And I'm, I'm like, <laughs> bid on me because I'm sure I'm going to win or whatever. But bid me? I was like, maybe it's a T that's supposed to be there. It's bite me. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, what is this bid me? So I'm, I'm curious by nature. I start looking at it. And basically, it, it's like order me. Force me to go see you. Tell me, shut up, get up, and come on. Or give me an order so I have to obey it. That's what bid me says, means. So basically, he's telling Jesus, please, I can't. I'm not, I, I got faith. It's so small, Jesus, I'm not sure I can. So force me to go and go meet you where you're at. Don't give me an option. Don't give me a choice. Let me just go for it. That's okay. It requires new muscles of faith. It requires to see things a little bit differently at this moment. It demands more trust in the laws of the kingdom. Mm. Uh, you've tried this as a kid, right? Walking on water. Who's tried this? You know, you go and you dip your foot and then you're like, yeah, I, I walked. Yeah, you didn't walk. You didn't even float. You didn't do none of it. And then when you grow up a little more and you run fast, because you know you've got some great runners and you know that some runners make you run faster, uh, you take them off and now you go, this is how I'm going to do this. And then you start running. Da, na, 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 na. And then they go a little further on the pool and they 
I walked on the water. We all know it's true. Just in case. But we all know we don't walk on water. That's why Jesus says one word. Come. We don't know if there is the... That's maybe that's my matrix move. I don't know. Maybe it's the... Come. But this little word is very simple. And we understand this. If I tell Leah, come here. Leah will understand that she's... Is he really serious? Or is he just wondering? I'm just kidding right now. Right? She would understand that it's all about going from there to here. That there is a change of position. That you cannot stay where you're at. You need, you need to go where you're supposed to go. So Jesus is actually telling Peter, come, leave where you're at, the safety of your boat. You've been working for it for nine hours, not working. But hey, come, leave that comfort, come to where I'm at. Leave that situation, come to where I'm at. Leave your comfort, come to your insecurities. Leave what you know and come to where I want to show you. Leave what you're holding on to and come and see what I've got for you. What one small word changes everything in this story. Come. There's only one guy out of 12 that listens, by the way. We all know this, right? And he goes and he walks on water. <laughs> because the test of our faith will reveal the strength of our faith as well. They all trusted Jesus. One had faith that he would do what he said he would do. Because when he shows the way, you obey. Not the other way around. I'll obey when you give me the way. When he tells you this is the way, you obey. It's way harder. Or scarier. I get it. When we moved from Canada to the States, there was no way. At least in my family's mind, there was no way. Yeah, there was that too. I was like, Jesus, we got we, great church, great job, great ministry position. It's all good, Jesus. No, we ain't going nowhere. We got no reason. Oh, yes, you are. Come, Stefan. No, we ain't. We speak in French all the time. I understand English, but why would I go speak English all the time? Them Americans anyways. Canadians need you too. Don't ask me why he wanted us to move. So we said, okay. When you obey, the way will be there. We have to trust what he tells us and do it. All the time. Because like I said, on the other side of our obedience, on the other side of your faith, your faith will be empowered. It's not about judging our lack of faith. He, he sunk, right? We all know this. He sunk, right? He saw the water. He saw the waves. And, and this is the third part of this story, which is as important. Because he, I mean, he walked out. We don't know how long, how far, how long did it last? It didn't say like 15 seconds later, three minutes later, one hour. It, we don't know. Even two seconds. I mean, I'm, I walked on water. Yeah, for two seconds, but I did. <laughs> right? We don't know how long. We don't, we don't know that. All we know is that he was afraid when the wave started and he saw the wind and everything else. When he saw the circumstances around him, he started panicking. And the, the issue is that we think that some, sometimes the opposite of our faith is that when we start doubting, it's not the opposite of our faith. It's got nothing to do with that. It's not even when we start asking questions to our Savior. It's not even our disobedience that goes against the, the opposite of our faith. That's not it. The opposite of our faith is our sight. We walk by faith, not by 
Faith is the evidence of things unseen or not seen. We want to see the circumstances go the way we want them before we obey, before we trust. We want, this, we want the ocean to calm down so maybe I can walk on it. So when we see and analyze the circumstances in the market, in the move that I need to do, and you fill in the blank with whatever you want, we are trusting our faith. Uh, we are trusting our sight, not our faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. He saw the circumstances, he panicked, he was afraid. Phobia, by the way. So funny, he got scared, he had a phobia of, is he really going to take care of me? Is he really going to save me? Wow. He does sink. And then depending on how you were raised, you will react this way to Jesus. Oh, you of little faith. It's not, it's not an admonition, it's not a face palm oh it's not none of that he's actually telling him you have faith but it's still little that's what he's saying it's not the unbelief that we saw earlier it's it's there but it's not grown yet if it is better to be with jesus in the storm obviously in the storm it's always better but don't miss this last part when he was sinking and he cries out, Jesus, when he says that, you don't, it's not jello. You don't, you know, when you start sinking, you don't start sinking, you sink. He grasps him. They get back to the boat. What happens in between? Well, the funny side of me is like, you probably dragged them on the water. It's okay, we'll be okay. <laughs> Breathe in, Peter. Come on, man. Can't believe you, man of little faith. Or did he grab him by the hair? We don't know. But I think he grasped them because that's the word. You lifted him up. That's what it means. They went back to the boat. He didn't walk once. He walked twice. The thing is, is our faith, when it's empowered, when we start, when we start believing and we're acting upon it and we obey, we'll, we'll fear some one point. We'll panic. It won't go the way we want it. It's normal. That's okay. It's okay. But on the other side of our fear your faith will be restored as well. And he won't slap you for your lack of faith. He will reward you for this little faith that you had and trusted him. Because it finishes the story. They go on the other side finally, all of them, and then people see Jesus like, ah, Jesus, right? And now if you remember, they just want to touch the hem of his garment again because they heard the stories of prior. When that lady just touched the hem of his garment, it was okay. Well, when we start with our restored faith, when we have our faith that is empowered again, when we get to the other side, ministry happens. It always does. It always does. And this is where, after, show us our last uh, slide, please. It's this one. On the other side of your empowered, fearful, and restored faith, your purpose begins. But you have to go through that test again and again until you succeed at it. Because we need this. Because we need this. So when we read scriptures according to what he's trying to tell us, not to what I want to understand, it changes a few things. So maybe you're in that ship. It's been, poo, it's been rocking. And it's not rock and roll, man. It's where it is rock and roll, I don't know. And you're like, oh, and he says, come. Don't worry, you're there, it's okay, I get it, come. Obey what he's telling you to do. 
and he'll provide the way to get out of it. It might not be what you think. It might not be what you want. But it will be what he wants. And he will show you how to grow and live out your faith. Not just in words, but in deeds as well. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to get up. We're done for this morning. I know some of you had a, you've had that type of a week where, oh, Jesus, you're asking me to trust you and have faith in you. And I'm, I'm, only because everybody I know has to go there at one point, maybe every week. For, in my case, it's every day. I have to trust Jesus again tomorrow for tomorrow for my daily bread. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, can you just give us a bakery so we're okay for the week? Please, it'd be awesome. It's just our daily bread. So I know that we need to, some of you need a restored faith this morning. Here's what I'll do, okay? I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but if you need your faith to be restored, can you raise your hand? We just want to pray with you. Okay, there's a few of you. Good. I'm happy that there was no hesitation. Oh, keep, keep your hands raised. I'll, I'll tell you why in a few seconds. There's no shame in this, by the way, because it wasn't about shaming when Jesus said that. It was, you got it. You've got this faith. It's great. So keep your, keep your hands raised. Now I want, I want the church as a body to turn around. Look at the people around you. Maybe some of you are that, those that need healing, and maybe that's you. Raise your hand as well. Okay, we've got a bunch of people here. I want the body to minister to the body this morning. I want us as a church to be able to pray and support and Jesus seeing their faith. So here's what I want us to do. Go close to somebody that you see next to you. Ladies, go with ladies. Guys, go with guys. You raise your hand because if, just so if you go like this, I can't, they might not see your hand. Right? No shaming. This is beautiful, by the way. This is beautiful. We get, I want to make sure that if you're not praying for somebody, get out of your chair. Come, go, I should say. Go pray with people that you, well, there's already 15 people. It doesn't matter. 16 will be good. Pray for that faith to be reignited. That faith to be restored. Pray for them. If you don't know their names, it's okay. Your daughter, your son, you can pray for that. Pray that in the midst of their storm, Jesus will do what he has to do. And let's finish this way today. The church taking care of the church. People taking care of people. People praying for others. Simply, and maybe one or two of you will raise your voice. And please, don't pray the world. Just pray a short prayer to leave the opportunity for somebody else to pray. And we believe that on the other side of this storm, on the other side of those challenges, on the other side of this disease, on the other side of this lack of faith, maybe for some of you, you'll say it that way. There is something miraculous that Jesus wants to do. Jesus, thank you because on the other side of our activated faith, you will do what you only you can do. And we thank you because we can trust you and your kingdom is safe. And we can receive you, and the way we receive you and your work will determine the results we'll be getting. And we thank you for this, Jesus. We thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. And everybody says, amen. On the other side of these doors, when you walk out, go tell somebody, thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying with me. Tell them on the other side of those doors, God has got your faith in his hand and you can trust him. Go say something positive to somebody on the other side of these doors, okay? We love you guys. Be ready for next week. And we bless you. And the Lord will shine his face upon you. That is for certain. 
Have a great week, guys.